In the today's episode, I will be showing you the, how to build this research probe that will be gathering data and science from EVE, and we will be launching it in this fancy space plane. Yes, you will be able to get these awesome shots too. Yes, and note it's a space plane, not an SSTO, because it still cannot get to orbit. However, it can launch the satellites, and we will be talking all about the research needed to be able to build such a probe the space plane assembly and how we went from using the nukes to using you know the regular terrier engines and why and we will be also be discussing most notably the flight of the given vessel because getting it to the orbit is one thing and designing is the whole other jam so doesn't matter however this thing cannot get to orbit but it can get high enough above the altitude to be able to get this done now everything will be accelerated so let's get into the research shall we yeah i'm building i'm researching the meta materials advanced metal works we have a load of science that we have gotten from our jewel mission so i'm trying to unlock the nodes willy-nilly and as many as i can muster because well we want to get forward this long range antennas probes ion propulsion research there we go uh, and then we want to be delving also into the advanced metal works aerodynamics high altitude flight and hypersonic flight there we go unlock this and the heavy aerodynamics we will need it for the fairings good i think we're not yet at the rapier level but it will be good now let's talk about the probe design so first the small octo 2 then we're gonna put a science container to gather all that science because it's kind of important and then we're gonna be building the antenna to transmit it solar panels to power it and we must not forget the the science experiments that we will be putting on top notably the hot thermometer then we're gonna put gravioli on the other side we're gonna put the magnetometer boom and uh, well yeah, technically i can put it on this side on the other side i can put uh, well let's put this first atmospheric scanner and i want to on the other side to put the mystery goo i'm thinking yeah, at least for one experiment from EVE, that will be bringing us uh, also some science. And then I want to add, add this to fuel tanks. There we go. Okay, that looks cool. Exploration probe mark one. Uh, note that there are some... I, I've forgotten to actually put the batteries. I need to put the batteries on this vessel. Yeah, four of them, please. Thank you. That looks good. Okay, we're gonna place barometer centrally and magnetometer boom and everything is there. Okay, staging. Six, extend the antenna, seven, extend the solar panels and we're good. And on the eight, we're gonna put all of the experiments in one action group and on the nine, we're gonna collect all those experiments from the get-go. Look at that. Delta V, 6.7 thousand meters per second. However, it has very low thrust to weight, so I want to put this small booster that will be getting it into the orbit around Kerbin. So yeah, that's the whole purpose of this small booster is actually to get it to orbit above Kerbin. Now, uh, I'm gonna put save it as a sub-assembly and I rerouted the part and let's get on to the space plane design. Everything is heavily accelerated because this episode is long enough. It took me three and a half hours to record this and I have to cram it in the 41 minutes. And to be honest, I didn't want to skip a thing apart from just, you know, hitting time warp. So there you go. So my initial thoughts was that this would be an SSTO and it would be using a Nerva. So uh, then we're going to put the adapter and then we're going to be placing this probe. However, you will notice that the probe somewhat differs here because that was the version 1 probe that didn't have the science container. And then I realized science container actually makes those components reusable. So yeah. Okay, so then I decided I'm going to be putting the, the RCS tanks. We have the batteries. I'm going to put the SAS unit. There we go to have control over the vehicle looks fine to me then we're gonna be placing some wings i'm just looking for the correct aerodynamic surface i'm thinking something like this wing connector type a yeah then we're gonna be put putting the pre-coolers because we will be flying hypersonic in this bad boy so there we go we want to put the ramjet engines there we go i want to just make sure that i've put everything on a correct action group because technically it would 
I thought it as a single stage to orbit, but it will be multiple stages, mainly because it's, yeah. Anyway, so that being said, let's put the wings here, and I'm going with a very, very simple yet effective design. Canards in front, uh, tail fins somewhere. I'm just looking for a good place to put them. Well, um, yeah, no. Okay, I'm gonna put them and rotate them on the wings. I think that looks much better. Okay, come on, like this. There you go. There's the vertical stabilizers that we all know and love. So we're gonna call it Space Plane Mark 1. There we go. All right. To me, it looks cool. Okay, center of lift is slightly ahead, but once we add the control services, that should correct itself, hopefully. And if not, we can always drag it back and forth, so that's not a problem. Technically, it will be fine. Wing connector type A, there we go, beautiful. I'm gonna uh, just put the liquid fuel, or at least I was thinking I'm gonna just put the liquid fuel, because both of these engines just use the liquid fuel. We don't need oxidizer. So that's gonna change later on, but who cares? Okay, so attachment part to offset, and as you can see, I'm dragging the wings slightly towards the back to make sure that I correct that center of lift and the center of mass combo. Then I'm putting everything on action group, so... Uh, six seven eight and nine were actually for the probe and one through five will be for the plane okay so second will be activating and deactivating the engines and the intakes the first one is to activate the nerva let's put a, a bunch of lights because we want the lights it looks it makes the plane look cool especially when you, you go into the night and turn on the lights well it looks very nice all right so there we go. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to put some lights on the inside as well. So, I mean, you know, small details that count. Now, let's go with the landing gear. I'm going to go with a large landing gear, or medium landing gear, that is. We put them just slightly behind the center of mass. There we go. Rotate, and good. This is the initial prototype. Oh, I'm going to be placing the RCS. We do have some RCS. And uh, if we're going to be using it to orient in space and everything, I think it's good to have it. Uh, I will show you exactly the main use why I want to have the RCS. And the main use is actually to pull the plane from underneath the probe once it gets disconnected within in the bay. So, yeah. Okay, then we want to put air brakes. I'm going to put it on the engine cowls because I think those look very nice here. There we go. Look at them deploy. That looks good to me. All right. I'm making sure that everything is auto-strutted. There we go. And then we'll soon enough, I can put a small even fins here that just to make it cool. Making sure that only the tail fins are controlling the yaw while everything else in controlling the pitch and roll alone. Also, I'm mapping the inner flaps to, be, to act as a flaps as well so that they can provide some extra lift during the low uh, low speeds so that it helps us you know keep the stability there we go i'm also putting like okay i'm putting it to deploy there we go elevon there we go uh it's okay that they're in the same group because once when we'll be using they will hopefully be detached from the plane okay so that being said uh, I th I'm just doing some final checks and let's see if we can now what I want to do I want to be making the transfer to Eve so add an alarm that's gonna be happening in 168 days and after cutting out uh, the epilepsy warning uh, we are gonna get and test the said aforementioned plane there we go we have Jebediah and Bill taking the plane and I'm doing all of this in three to four time acceleration because this is a test. So there we go. Why am I kidding? I'm calling it a test because it didn't work in the first time so I had to retry it. Anyway, I've noticed that those engines are extremely thirsty. Probably because I've been using them in the afterburner mode or something. I have no idea. However, they're going really fast. And now I have tried to, well, they burned out, so I tried to use the Nerva, and I realized that at 0.42 there's not much I can do, and we are not nearly high enough to be able to sustain ourselves on Nerva. So, all in all, the Nerva burned through the fuel, and we are at the apoapsis of 52. I did a quick deploy test. Well, let's see what we got. And you can see, now I'm trying to use the RCS, but I don't have vertical RCS. So I had to do this, you know, the pushing way. There we go. 
I just wanted to see how it will perform, but we were already going on a downward slope, meaning, okay, test fail, back to the drawing board. All right, so uh, instead of Nerva, who is very heavy, I needed a more oomph, so I put the Terrier engine. Then I've tested it a couple of times, I make sure that I have oxidizer, I have restricted a little bit of the amount of the liquid fuel and I wanted to put more oxidizer in. However, after some deliberation and testing, which I'm gonna save you from the, everything, uh, I have decided to, I will go with the twin, actually, twin engines. Uh, it's a, a very fine balancing act be between, you know, a single engine, dual engine and whatnot. And here you can see me adding a vertical RCS thrusters because they will help me ultimately get out of the plane. And I'm thinking, okay, well, this won't work. Okay, I'm gonna detach it. I'm gonna attach a little bit smaller fuel tank and I need it to be rocket fuel. And then I'm, this is gonna be also rocket fuel. And then I'm gonna be attaching two rapiers. Sorry, not rapiers, two terrier engines. Yeah, uh, that little bit messed up my center of mass and center of lift. So I pulled the outer wings a little bit back, also the wheels a little bit back making sure that I have reset the enabling of engines and then just making sure that everything is auto strutted. So what I ultimately put, I put a new version of the Exploration Pro with a booster. It's very tightly integrated. So I had to remove the battery, which I'm gonna be placing it on the back wall of this uh, space plane. So there we go, lights, a little bit of batteries. There we go, we don't need them that much. So that they're gonna be working fine. All right, and I want to put an additional RCS thruster blocks. And now I think this should be fine. And instead of Jeb, Jeb always crams himself in. So I'm thinking as I sort out everything, I'm going to be putting a Valentina instead of Bill. So uh, one thing also, I'm doing the planetary window to Eve and then we're going to be burning up. So this is it. We are going up and today we're going to be launching that tiny probe. There we go. Beautiful takeoff, screenshot. I'm not sure if this is going to be a screenshot for the episode, but we're going straight up. These engines are still very thirsty. However, the higher we get up, the quicker we get up, the more fuel we can use to, use, to get that velocity that we need to be able to eject that probe out of uh, Urban's uh, atmosphere. Yeah, that's the word. So at the level of eight and a half thousand, I started to level off at 10 degrees and hitting these afterburners like there's no tomorrow. So that's the whole idea and uh, I'm sticking to it. Okay, we have 3.2 and you can see our Delta V is going up because we are getting faster and faster. So when we're coming closer, I needed to start monitoring uh, my intakes because at 19 or 20 my engines will cut off so I turn off the terriers and as you can tell we have plenty of uh, fuel to get us 670 to get us above the 60 or 70 marker but I have to be monitoring my oxidizer because it's the oxidizer who's gonna tell us when we ran out of fuel in this case as you can see it's being it's chugging through faster I have made it so that the liquid fuel remains just enough to get us back to the KSC because this is a space plane, which means plane as well. So it should fly back to the KSC, hopefully. So there we go. We're burning just high up and I'm hoping that I will be able to reach. I'm trying to aim for that sweet spot of, let's say, 30-ish and accelerate to orbital velocities as much as possible. So we go 67, 68, 69, get up there, you miserable little, oh, 70, just enough. Open up the cargo bay door and let's detach the probe. Oopsie, all right, well, okay, and now RCS thrusters. So this is the reason why I want vertical thrusters on your space plane to remove the space plane from underneath the probe. Okay, so the space plane, you will wait for a second. You, I need you to deploy everything you have and then to make sure that we get this cool cinematic, which will be the screenshot for the episode, of course. And then control from here, there we go. Extend the antenna, extend the solar panels, forget that I've put them on an action group and just play with it. All right, and then we have to activate the engine and make sure that we bring the periapsis all the way up. 
So there we go. We clear now because the S the, well the space plane won't be in the air forever, so we have to make sure that we put our apoapsis up. Oh, and our apoapsis is going down. We are already on the downward slope. Okay, but I think I can fix this. So I'm gonna be burning a little bit vertically. Let's see, apoapsis at 67, 68, 69, 70. There we go. And the periapsis is going up. And ladies and gentlemen, okay, uh, well, well. We are orbital, well, almost. Okay, I'm just gonna be thrusting until I get a periapsis out of the Kerbin's sphere of influence, hopefully. No, doesn't look like that. Okay, never mind. let's switch back to the space plane. It's already re-entering. So, air brakes, and I want to go back, obviously. So, I've put everything to make sure that we get as quickly as possible decelerated because we want to be going back to the KSE. So I was thinking, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough fuel. It is a little bit way off. However, I have, if you look at that Delta V, that looks enough to me, I don't know. I could be wrong. So air brakes, I'm gonna pull the split S here. For the aircraft lovers, you know what a split S is. It's the opposite, exact opposite of Immelmann. Uh, so there we go, and let's go up, up and away. The engines are not really efficient here, so I'm already thrusting to go higher up. And I'm gonna do a couple of suborbital hops just to make sure that uh, basically I save my fuel. Uh, okay, I think I can make it. Uh, there is a landmass here. So in theory, I could be landing here. I'm not sure if I want to really. I mean, 3,000 meters per second delta V, that should be plenty, shouldn't it? Let's see how it does it go if we, you know, just jack, 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 jack up the afterburners and... All right, 800, 900. I'm just trying to, you know, super cruise very high altitudes. And here, yeah. As you can see, my engines are flaming out, but I think I can make it, so I'm gonna push for it. You know, famous last words. I think I can make it. Anyway, uh, sorry, Jebediah and Bill. Yeah, I thought I was having Val here. Uh, well, you know, stuff happens. Jeb, I think you managed to sneak yourself into this one again. Yeah, don't you be clapping, buddy. I'm not happy with that. I'm very, very, yeah, 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 I know you're having fun. Yeah, but now Bill is mocking me too. Oh, you sly bugger, you. All right, okay, so apparently we are once again going down. I'm turning up the engines. I want to accelerate again and do another hop. Hopefully that one will get us back to the KSC. I'm pulling up and I'm thrusting. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm getting less and less confident that we will be getting to the KSC. Okay, possibly. 971 meters per second. These engines are really thirsty. I'm trying to use thrust a little bit using the RCS. Okay. Well... Actually, guys, I might even accelerate this a little bit in the post-production. So, bear with me. No, you know, I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna accelerate it because I need to thrust a little bit more and yeah, there we go, come on, you can do it! I just might be able to perform the suborbital ho- yeah. 50 meters per second remaining. Yeah, we're not gonna get there, are we? Oh, there's an island! Ooh, ooh, there's an island! Okie doke! Now, um, yeah. Should, we should probably be able to glide all the way over there. But we're so acceler decelerating so rapidly. I'm trying so hard to actually thrust We're using RCS, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. Let's see if we can glide and use our potential energy and convert it into kinetic to get all the way to that island. Uh, I'm a little bit less optimistic now, to be honest. Yeah, losing a lot of airspeed. I have 50 meters per second that I'm gonna be activating once we get very, very low to be able to arrest our vertical velocity. And I'm actually gonna dive a little bit. There we go, okay. 
Okay. Okay, now these 8 meters per second I really have to keep. I try to get a little bit, you know, acceleration there, sorry. Press the pause button, happens sometimes. Uh, well, Jeb and Bill, you know you were making the mockery out of me? I think the joke's on you, people. So I've cranked up the acceleration as Jeb and Bill are gonna go fishing. Yeah. Okay, just like make sure that we have a very gentle touchdown. Okay, I'm gonna accelerate a little bit. Yeah, okay. And now nose up, nose up, nose up, and and splash down. Well, the aircraft survived. Anyway, we have to be performing now the orbital insertion. Yeah, okay. Periapsis is above atmosphere. That was the most important thing, and then I put the 200 by 200 um orbit and i think it's actually good because this aircraft or this probe packs a metric crap ton of delta v but its thrust to weight is completely negligible so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna accelerate to the fact that we get to the 200 kilometer orbit there we go almost there I love the glow of the ion drive, that's really nice. Alright, so now, in order for us to eject to the EVE, we need to create a maneuver node that will be 870 meters per second, which means our burn time will be 7 bloody minutes. No way that can happen, so at the maneuver node I will be performing a series of boost burns, which means right about now, which is basically... Uh, this, we should start in 12 days and 13 hours. So what I'm doing now is I'm burning in the general direction of the ejection to raise my apoapsis high enough so that uh, we're going to do a couple of passes. So on each pass we're going to do a boost back, or sorry, not the boost back, the orbital, how do you call it? The or planetary transfer burn? Yeah, I think the part of the planetary transfer burn. And as you can see, my uh, my burn is, you know, dancing all over the place, but eventually it does settle to a correct value, assuming that you stop burning at the right moment. And to be perfectly honest, guys, I'm completely eyeballing this one. So, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, burning. This is the second burn. So I roughly burn 200 meters per second, 2 to 300 on every pass. So I think I estimate it should be either three or four passes. When you have a craft that has a very low thrust to weight, this is one of the ways how you can ensure that you have ejection at the right time, at the right moment. So there we go. All right. See, now it's 388 meters per second. So another burn and that will be 3 minutes and 11 seconds. Okay, so I'm thinking now I'm gonna skip to the actual burn. Okay, getting ready for the actual burn and now we have to burn 3 minutes and some odd seconds. So let's see if we can get this done on this orbit or it will be have to be the next one. So let's check it out. We are burning and it says it's burn time 27 minutes. I don't listen to you. Sorry, buddy. There we go. And when you drop down, I don't care. Okay, so on the next pass, I think we will be just right. So, okay, getting ready. And it should be in three hours, two hours. I think we have a good enough ejection orbit. So to make sure I want to be... Yeah. Okay, let's get close and then we'll do the final burn. Sorry guys, this is a little bit repetitive process, but I told you in this series, I'm actually not skipping anything. The only thing that I will be skipping, if I will be skipping, it will be me pressing the time accelerate until we get to the right point. So nothing else will be skipped. This is sort of like series of almost like tutorial like missions that will help you get to the planet. And I'm trying to make each of them unique and very, very distinct and cool. So let me know how am I succeeding in the comments below. All right, so I'm taking down my sound periapsis to interject with Eve's orbit, and then we'll see how good of a job did we do. I'm thinking somewhere along this side, and here we have an orbital inclination fix. 
which is going to happen there. And look at that. Aha. So we do have a good if periapsis, which is amazing. And that's going to happen in 74 days. Now, I figured I'd do the gravioli and then send the data, but apparently I cannot do the sending of the data because I don't have enough electric charge. Oh, that's gonna be making my life miserable, which means I will actually have to retrieve this probe if I want to. If I want to get all this sweet science. Oh boy. Well, never mind that. I'm logging the gravity data and I'm gonna store everything in the canister storage. So there's another way how to tackle this. Told ya. So there we go. Let's warp to the next maneuver and that's gonna be happening in uh, one day uh, or actually a couple of hours. That's the orbital inclination fix slash minor correction. So 358 meters per second. Great. All right, let's turn this way. I mean, this craft packs a bunch of, you know, Delta V, so ultimately it's really good for deep space exploration. You could go lighter with it if you want to ditch the side tanks, but then you would have less than half. You would have actually around one third of it, of Delta V. And for me, that just couldn't gel. That was just not enough. All right. So we are burning. The burn is going to be taking 1 minutes and 47 seconds. So it's a little bit of a longer burn, but then what can you do? Uh, anyway, I wanted to discuss a little bit, you know, this KSP series. I'm hoping you're liking it. This is a series of episodes where I take on a specific problem, like getting a probe to EVE and launching it with a space plane. And I take it from the original inception research all the way to finish while I'm unlocking the tech tree. Um, I think it's a really good format. That means some episodes can get very lengthy. Some of them will probably not be that lengthy, but I would really, really appreciate your feedback. So, you know, if you really like the content, do hit that like button and also let me know in the comments below how does that work with you? Are you trying to play with it as well along? etc. And maybe I will be posting the craft for it even on the um, on the workshop, on the Steam workshop, so you can actually play along. Okay, so we have an SOI change. There we go. And I've booked it, so it's going to be happen in 70 days. Time acceleration, be damned. Alright, we're getting into the Eve's sphere of influence, which should be happening right about now-ish. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and the periapsis is 1.6 million. So, now I'm not gonna get into the Eve's periapsis, but what I'm gonna be, I'm gonna lower it so it's low enough that I grab the Eve low above Eve science. So that's kind of the idea. The periapsis is around 138. I think that should be more than enough. So, and the burn is going to take 17 seconds, happening in one hour. There we go. Let's first do the experiments. So now I'm just doing all the experiments, and I'm doing them manually, because I wanted to see if any of them got, you know, cached from the previous interaction. And now I'm collecting all the data experiments. I'm not going to do yet a mystery goo, because that's one's going to happen only when we are a low above Eve. In space, low above Eve. There we go. We are aligned, so let's just now gently stroke that uh, periapsis down to 138-ish kilometers. There we go, 133 kilometers. So now the only thing that's remaining is for us to set up a periapsis warning and then we will be returning. So we're only going to do a flyby. We have enough Delta V to get us into the orbit around Eve, but then possibly it could be a one-way trip. And you have to note, the reason why I'm saying this is because we have to get back to Kerbin orbit because of uh, the limitation of with the battery power. So yeah, uh, my intention is to go back and get captured. And maybe in the next episode, I'm gonna show you how to do an orbital rendezvous and grab this with a grappling hook. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, that would be actually a nice episode. Okay, so now we are in space low, periapsis alarm fired off. So now let's do all that sweet science that we can. We're gonna do with the mystery goo first. There we go. 
in space low above highlands and let's go with the science log gravity data temperature magnetometer boom there we go everything in space low so now let's collect all of the 12 experiments that we have that rendered the mystery goo inoperable however hello beautiful eve mistress off we go bye bye There we go. So now we're going to get out of the Eve's sphere of influence. Oh, this is actually a very, very beautiful episode. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing. I have to actually make some sort of screenshot where I show both the launching of SSTO and also this Eve Pro because I just think both of them look really cool. So with that thing being said, all right. Uh, no dilly-dallying. Now I have to create a maneuver node that will get us back to Kerbin again. So let's set Kerbin as a target. Ascending node is right here. There we go. Okay, and now we have to plan an encounter. Nope. Nope, nope. Uh, there we might have a shot. Okay, so let's see. Actually, I'm thinking that first I want to be taking care of the orbital inclination because that will be happening in 11 minutes. Oh, the burn time is going to be 11 minutes. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to accelerate this a little bit. As you can see, I'm using physics time warp. This is also another way how you can accelerate your burn. You, you know, even though you're in space, and it says you cannot time warp, you can hold ALT and then just hit your time warp button, in which case you can go up to four times physics time warp, which is really great because it helps you out. Okay, so now I'm I'm decreasing my descending node to be as low as it can be, while at the same time I'm also extending my apoapsis to intersect Kerbin, hopefully. There we go. Okay. So add a maneuver node, I'm going to add a maneuver node here, and now I'm going to be trying to secure us the Kerbin uh, rendezvous. So now let's see, what can we do? Oh, we can go and burn radially. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to secure that approach. You just watch guys. So there we go. A little bit more fiddledge. Come on. Ah, there we go. There we go. Almost there. Almost there. And periapsis. Beautiful. Well, as long as we have periapsis, that means with a significant enough, you know, tweaking, we can get into orbit. So, and it's going to take whooping 1.5 thousand meters per second, and it's going to be happening in two years. So I'm going to actually skip to that. So nothing to see. It just revolves around the sun. Okay, so the only thing that you have skipped is me driving circles around the sun. So nothing really spectacular to see here. However, now we're going to be doing our correction burn that will... Oh, and I've... late. I talk too much. Yeah, what can I tell you? Alright, so the burn is going to be taking 11 minutes. And uh, as always, I'm accelerating in physics time warp. And I'm going to be accelerating in post-production. You really don't need to sit here for a couple of minutes. And through the magic of video editing, a very long burn was slightly less long. Well, ain't that great. All right, so there we go. Just mainly trying to secure the curb in periapsis. Okay, the physics is freaking out. As long as the periapsis is reducing, I'm going to continue to be burning just to make sure that we do decrease. All right, and here at this descending node, I'm going to do a final correction. And let's see if we can bring down that Kerbin periapsis even further. I cannot apparently get the, the ascending and descending node less, which I guess it's fine. Then maybe I'll just gonna do the burn here. Okay, there we go. Bringing out down the periapsis. I'm just trying to put it to a more manageable level. So 72, 24. Okay, that sound looks already much better. 24 million. Let's see if we can tweak it a bit more. 23, 23.7. No, radially. I'm always testing out different, you know, approaches, see what happens. Okay. So, okay, 23 it is. I'm, I'm not going to go and dilly-dally too much about it. I'm just going to be 
having it as is. Okay. Oh, there we go. I managed to actually get a lower periapsis. That's nice. All right. So it's going to be a total of 26 seconds and it's going to happen in 10 seconds. So nine, blah, blah, whatever. Let's do it. All right. And okay. I think we have our carbon periapsis set at 5 million. So I'm going to create an SOI change alarm to remind me once I get into the carbon sphere of influence. Technically, I don't need an alarm because automatically time would slow down on the sphere of influence change. But sometimes I do get to make cinematic shots and everything and then I get lost. Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to add the maneuver node to put us equatorial. So that's why I have selected the moon as target and I'm trying to put the ascending and descending node as low as possible. Come on, 4.7. Well, Okay, that would be the other way around. Can I actually do an intercept with moon and maybe just... Nah. I was thinking to, to go and do a moon flyby, which would basically me do a, you know, a gravity slingshot to get myself into the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. But I have like 2,100, so which is more than enough to get us in good. So I think I'm going to reject that and I'll, I'm going to retry it again. Okay, so let's get here. All right, nicely, nicely aligned. 7.45, okay, close enough. 4.8, 6.6. Well, I can always correct it later, so it's not really a big deal. 5.5 with a low enough periapsis. That's wonderful. Okay, I looks like I'm gonna have enough delta V, so let's go turn prograde and let's do the burn to make sure that we pass very, very close to carbon. So as you can, as I said in this episode, I'm just returning the craft to the orbit and then I think in the next one, as I proposed, I will actually be putting the uh, building a craft that will go with a hook, grab this guy, take out all the science and then return back to Kerbin with the experiment's results and probably ensure that this actually probe crashes into the Kerbin so we don't leave out the space debris. There we go. All right, so time warp and let's gonna post 112 meters per second. Three, two, one, go. Hitting the accelerated burn and I'm thinking that, all right, so 31, 20, 26, 25. The burn will be almost done. Let's say periapsis is increasing. That's weird. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, and then in order to put us to put it as low as possible i want i'll need a lot of delta v actually to get it to a hundred kilometer orbit because initially i would really like to get it to 100 by 100 kilometer orbit so i don't need to do complex intercepts so it's almost like intercepting a space station or something and clearly i have enough delta v to do so so we're gonna be doing a quite hefty burn the burn will start in 12 seconds and burn and this time, since we are not on an, an orbital, you know, we're basically, if we don't do anything, we'll go into the interplanetary space. So it is perfectly okay for us to do very, very long burn. So that will actually ensure we have a good, also we are on the sunny side. With the ion-based craft, you have to also make sure that you have plenty of electric charge. As you can tell, my electric charge is never going down. But uh, xenon gas is, and we will have... We're getting low on gas, actually, if you can say that for the ion engines, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we are almost at the periapsis of 100 kilometers. There we go. Come on, come on. 100. Perfect. So now it's time to bring that apoapsis down. And it's going to take 318. So almost yeah we, we're left with 300 meters per, per second from 6.7 thousand so clearly i wish i could say i have planned this guys honestly i have not so i eyeballed it and i just got lucky what can i tell you okay we're coming into the final stretch where we will be actually capturing this thing into the 100 by 100 kilometer orbit so yeah there we go we're gonna shut down the engine co collect the data 
and that pretty much means that we are more or less done with the episode. I'm going to keep all of these experiments and as always guys you know what to do. Thank you very much for watching, like if you liked the today's episode and I will be seeing you in the next one where we will be retrieving this bad boy. Thanks for watching.